G'day guys, welcome back, welcome to pouring your heart out and I'm going to do a pink and silver coaster for you today. I did one um, recently and I really wasn't happy with the way the pinks blended together so I'm going to have another go and this time I'm going to put the gold leaf on instead of that um, silver sprinkle that I put on top. Look my wristbands. They were gloves, <laughs> long, long gloves, but um, they're too thick. Oh, look, they've even got fingernails written on them. <laughs> they were just too thick and I couldn't move my fingers. So I chopped them off there right at the very end. And uh, now I use them as wristbands. Woohoo! Because it I, doesn't matter what I do, even if I'm really, really careful, I take my gloves off like this, I'm still getting um, resin on my wrist. So see if that works, hey? I've got my resin here. I've mixed up 400 grams and it has just been sitting for oh, 15 minutes, not even that. And the bubbles have pretty much all gone. So just let it sit there. Righty O. Um, yeah, as I said, pink. Now this little guy here, he was sitting in a warm bath this morning. My Lorez. I think the label oh the label's starting to come off because it was in the hot water it is called silver rose it's a metallic paste and when i opened it because i haven't used it before because it was rock hard it was like all dry and i was going to throw it out and then I, someone said oh, i put it in a hot water bath so i boiled the kettle and i put a little bit of boiling water in a container and sat it in there for a little while and it's gone nice and soft there's still a little bit of a, a lump in the middle that hasn't quite dissolved yet but yeah back to good as new so I'm going to use that and actually I might as well get started I'll tell you as I go what I'm using let's clean off my little pop stick there then I can use it again All right so I'm not going to have I, I always put too much color in I'm going to try with a tiny tiny little bit All right half a cup I've been using like three quarters of a cup I think it's probably too much right that's for the um that's for the edges and then I'm doing a pale pink actually you can have half a cup and you can have a third of a cup I'm going to cut right back and see how that goes you can be a third of a cup you could be a half a cup you can be half a cup that's the pink ink pink ink Oh, I should be putting those in first, but I'm, no, oh, I forgot. I'm getting carried away with pouring resin. That's my clear. And then this little one here can be the silver flakes. Still got a little bit left, so that can just sit there. Yeah, I'm supposed to put these in first, but I got carried away measuring my, my cups. These are uh, 120 ml cups, little coffee, little espresso cups, four ounces. And let's just... I don't know how much to put in let's just do that it's it's a little stick this one I've got three different size sticks I'm going to show you there's the first one I'll get them all out so you can see what what size I'm using I guess in case you're interested then there's that one and then there's the big daddy this is what I usually use for my acrylic pouring that's the one I use when I'm mixing my jug of resin and then that's the little one for my little cups. So there you go. Tongue depressors. All right, let's mix that up. Actually, I might just get all my colors out um, and then I'll mix them off camera. Beautiful pale pink. This one is by Art Tree Creations. It's called Himalayan Salt. And I'm going to do... A spoonful of that one and like I said I should have put that pigment powder in first but oh, I didn't Let's put the lids on those so you can see what I'm doing so that's that one and then this one is going to be my pink ink oh, I dropped something um, I have gone through and cleaned this with my little bit of masking tape I don't think that's going to want to come out there we go I'll just wet it 
use my baby wipe. Um, so yeah, um, I like I like having a pigment paste, a mica powder, an ink, and a clear. I, I think that they all work really nicely together. And I, I just want this to be quite pale, so let's just do... I'll see what one looks like. I probably need an extra one. And then this one here is the Lorez Expressions, and it is pearl white. So that's that one. I'll just wipe my little spoon and then I can use it again. And same thing, I'm just going to put in a spoonful. Spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. I love that movie. <laughs> okay, so that's that one. Um, and that's my clear and then this one is going to be my little silver flakes I'm just going to dip it into the resin that way I can actually pick some up otherwise it's really hard to pick it up and then I dip it back in I found that works really easily for me I try and pick it up with gloves and it just doesn't work So I'm going to put some of that in. Um, I'm going to stir these up. Oh, it blows away everywhere. You've got to be. Oh, now it's stuck. Oh dear. All right. Um, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to stir these, and I will be right back. All done. I ended up adding a little bit more to these three. So we're probably about two thirds of a cup now, which is what I tend to do on those other ones that I made. I just added a little bit more mica as well, just a little bit. Because I thought, oh, what if I've got too much left over, you know? All right, let's start with this gorgeous creature. And because it's got like a silvery tone, that's why I thought I'd add silver today instead of gold. Now, let's see if I can do a tiny edge. I always get carried away and put way too much of the dark colour along the edge. And then I'm upset because it's all oops, taken over. And somebody said to me, I can't remember who it was on, I think it was one of the comments on my YouTube channel, to put some clear <clears throat> between <clears throat> the pigment and the, the pigment paste and the mica powder. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have pigment paste, then ink. Oh, get out of there. Um... Yeah, so pigment paste, ink, mica powder, and go that way. I, I will push all these against the edges though, because these are little rocky edges, because I made this mold myself. So they go in and out and in and out. They're not sort of straight up and down. My sides aren't straight or flat. So there's little little caves, the little crevices sort of in there. So I'm just going to, I've got a tiny bit left too. That's okay. Put that there. Oh, I was going to zoom you in. Hang on. I always forget to zoom you in. There. Put you there, then you can still see my colours. How's that? You like that spot? Okay. I need to leave myself a note. Zoom the camera in. All right, now I'm just going to push all this in, so bear with me. Actually, it's moved in pretty well on its own, most places. There's only a couple of areas that need a little bit of help. 
but I haven't put very much in so it hasn't had the you know the pressure of pushing itself against the edges but I do want to do that do you know how normally I don't know why it does it but the outside color the um, the mica pigment tends to go down and then out and over the top of the um, whatever colors on the outside so that's why I'm going to put the this pretty much clear with a tiny little bit of ink ended up adding two more drops because it was just you couldn't even see the pink so hopefully this will be a little barrier because the pigment pastes and the powders are different weights and they move differently like one moves faster wants to go to the top um, so yeah I'm, I'm just going to try this I don't know if it will work or not and I might need more so let's just actually this is what I was going to do I was going to do do that try and keep them separate first because normally I do a puddle but let's just let's just try this why not a little bit of experimentation and just see if I can keep the pigment paste away from the mica powder and see whether it actually does anything or whether it still all closes in on itself it might still do that but uh, we'll just have a little play and see what happens just going to finish it all off who needs a bit more you do you've got plenty because you've got it in the middle Let's see if I can just push that little blob out a bit. I'm not going to scrape them because they've got a wax interior. These cups. And I don't want to get the wax sort of coming out. All right, that's not really moving very well. Um, now, don't forget to clean your sticks off because you can use them again. And once they've got resin on them, they've kind of got this barrier between them and the, um, and the, um, oh, they, they set off bubbles, you know, because it's a natural wood. But so if you seal them, then you don't have that problem. Because, you know, you, you get bubbles coming out of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not really explaining myself very well today. Right, puddle. My cup's getting warm these colors work nicely together what's that oh it doesn't matter it's a little blob of silver I haven't decided whether I'm going to put the um, silver flake in now or whether I'm going to wait for my flood coat I'm going to see what happens because you know how I always say I have to do a flood coat I shouldn't finish it all in one step <laughs> oh my gosh all right so I've still got some of this left actually let's leave some of that and maybe do another layer let's do some of this white next so don't fill your little cups up too much because they'll um, all run down the side rather than pour nicely okay so there's a little bit of that one left too Let me wipe my hands Just going to even this one out with a little bit of the pink because it hasn't poured very same. All right, now clear. Let's put some clear in the middle. And just push all that out. looking pretty okay so that's my clear I have still got some more I'm actually going to pour it into here whoops not all of it I was just telling you not to fill them up too much there we go half no more than half so that because they drip okay um 
Let's go back to, got a little bit of this pink left. Let's put a little bit in the middle. Haven't got a lot, so let's share. Oh, and I need to torch. Do you guys get like a, a shiny, I don't even know what it is. It's not like a residue. It's just a shiny bit from the, I don't know what it is, whether it's, it must be something in the micas, but it kind of sits on top, kind of looks like an oil slick. Do you guys have that or do you know what it is? All right, that one's gone. Um, more white. Oh, I said I was going to torch. Oh, I'm hopeless. I'm too keen to get it done. I'm so excited. I actually had to force myself to do an acrylic pour this morning. I thought, oh, what am I going to do for everyone? I better get up and do it. I've been doing acrylic pouring for nearly four years now, and I love it. But now that I've started this, I've got so many ideas of what I want to do, and I kind of think, oh, I have to force myself to do an acrylic pour. I'm trying to come up with new ideas, you see. It's hard to come up with new ideas for the pours. All right, let's torch. Really quickly. That pigment paste is... It has kind of... Well, I not really taken over but you can see that it's um you can see that it's there you know it's got that slightly darker hue around the edges something in there all right um now i've still got some more resin and everything has closed up so i i shouldn't waste my flakes should i i shouldn't because now they're wasted. Um, right. Clear. Like if I don't use it now, if I wait and do a top coat, those flakes are wasted. Or oh, the other thing, you know how I've been doing the um, 3D flowers? And I wait. Yes, you need a little bit more, I know. I wait uh, 20, 30 minutes before I use my resin for it to thicken up a little bit. Maybe I can do that because I've got the silver flakes there ready and waiting. How about I don't waste waste them and I let them sit there for another, ooh, I don't know, 15 minutes maybe. And then use them when everything's thickened up a little bit. So that's my other option. I can, I'm trialing. I'll try it. Now you don't have quite enough. Let's pop a little bit more in you. Whoops. Try to clean up my mess as I go. It's much easier. Then I can use this baking paper again. It's commercial baking paper. It's on a really big roll. It's bigger than the household stuff. It's expensive though. So I don't want to, I try and reuse it as much as I can. Okay. Um, let's torch again. Excuse my dogs. I didn't shut the door. I don't shut the door when I'm resining just to get some airflow. So you get to hear them, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. Um, I kind of have to decide now if I'm going to do a top coat or not. I think I think what I'll do, I will try it. I'll just wait. I'm going to put a little bit more of this clear in though. Um, and then I'm going to wait as long as I can. Oh, you've got a bit much there. You have to be careful. Obviously 400 is enough to fill these six coasters. These are made uh, six mil deep. Oh, look, I'm dripping and it's going to make a, it's going to leave a little pattern there. I wonder if I can fix that. No, probably not. You gotta be so careful when you, you know, try not to drip. Okay, let's torch again. I hope I've left enough room. This one's this one's um doming already. The others are okay, they can have a little bit of this in. So I'm going to I'm gonna to torch, I'm going to leave that. 
and I'm going to come back to it in, well, I don't know. I'm going to keep checking it for the, every 10 minutes and just see what happens. Because at the moment, if I put that in, it's just going to fall straight through. All right, so let's um, put you on pause for the next 20 minutes or so. And we'll see what's happening when I come back. What do you think? All right. I will see you soon. It's been um, 20 minutes. So I let my resin, just looking at my notes, I let my resin sit for 15 minutes before I poured. Uh, and then I poured and it's actually been 35 minutes since the beginning when I started pouring. That one's a little bit swirly because I took some resin out with my spoon because <laughs> it was a bit overflowing. So it's it does feel thicker now. Like it's not just pouring off. It's kind of blobbing off. So let's see how it goes, hey? Maybe I'll use a spoon. It's probably easier if I use a teaspoon. And I'll just do a little bit to begin with. One of those dogs always choose to bark when I start talking. <laughs> is it going to cover over or is it going to behave? I guess because my resin is quite thick, like it's, as I said, it's six mil thick, these coasters. Oh no. Um, it is falling through. Oh no, come out, come out. Oh dear, I'm gonna have to be more careful, aren't I? Don't want glitter in there. Come out. Oh dear. I'm not that happy with the colors, to tell you the truth. Like, I can't see the white at all. The pinks, this one's this one's okay. I can see darker and it's got lighter. I'm just made a mess of that now, haven't I? And look, it's coming back over the top. I have to be more careful. Hold that there and then put my spoon straight back in without moving it anywhere else. Let's do a little bit more on top because it is so deep, it's sunk. So add a little bit more, see if we can actually get it to sit on top there. It's really quite thick now, it doesn't even, oh no, you're a big blob. You can't stay there. You're just a trouble child, you are, this, this coaster. So that's a big blob there of it's still folded over, it hasn't even mixed. I'm taking that right out. I didn't separate them very well. Oh look, it's just closing over, you guys. So even though I waited, I guess I could have waited a little bit longer, but it's starting to get tacky and I thought, oh, better not wait too long. Maybe I should have waited just a little bit longer. It's hard to know, it really is, but I'm writing everything down. See, when I do that, it's leaving a little point, so it's quite tacky. Um, who else wants a tiny bit? I've got a tiny little bit of um, clear left, I might just Oh, it's moving really slowly. It says, I don't want to come out. I'm tired. I've had enough. I don't even know if I've got enough 
little blobs to do six. I might have to scrape it out. Really starting to set up and go gel-like now. So I think I've pushed it as far as I can push it. So it's been an hour now since I started mixing one hour. But all the resins are different. Some have a much longer life. Is it a pot life? Is that what you call it? Pot life? Before they set up. It's just flowing back into the middle. So obviously this little experiment, it was fun to do and I'm glad I did it, but overall I think it's still better to stop and do the flood coat with the, the glitter or your leaves or whatever it is you're using afterwards because the top has still flowed over the middle even though it's a weighted and it's really quite thick All right I'm gonna get you down for a close-up and see what you think just turn the ring light off so there we go see it's sort of a, a pinky silvery shimmery kind of a a color and there's my silver flake being covered I just like I don't want to have to mix up more resin do a flood coat wait another 24 hours so that uh, your silver shows up like there's got to be another way of doing this actually you know what I might do I've got an idea hang on one sec I've got this aluminum bright by Archery Creations. This is one that you can just sort of sprinkle over the top and then heat and it gives you a little bit of a silver layer. So I'm going to do that because I haven't left enough room um, in the coasters to do a flood coat. So mm, what will I use? You really don't need a lot. Tiny, tiny little bit. And I'm just tapping the edge of the pop stick with my finger just to get it to flow down. I don't want a lot. Maybe the underneath will be nicer. We shall see tomorrow. But at the moment, this is going to have to do a little bit of silver because all my flakes go on skis. If anybody knows how to get your silver flake to stay, um, yeah, I'd be interested. Otherwise, I might, I'm just going to have to do the flood coats, but I, you know, I don't want to, because <laughs> then you've got to wait another 24 hours before you can, you know, unmold them and use the mold. So it's a bit of a pain having to do that. All right, how's that looking? Is that even? Even Stephen. Okay, so it hardly took any at all. Um, and now you just have to basically melt that. Oh my gosh, it's sprayed everywhere. Okay, let's all spray everywhere then. <laughs> my coast is doomed. See how it's melting? They do tend to kind of spray around a little bit, so 
just be aware of that because they're very, very light, as in lightweight. Uh, they do smoke a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Take it down. I'll leave the ring light on for now. Hopefully it won't be too annoying. Okay, so you can see the, the shimmer of the silver. See if I can get you in a bit closer. All right, see the see the silver shimmer shimmer, and there's a few little sprays where it's blown out. Just a little bit of that. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of air coming out of that brulee torch. It's mainly just a flame, but it's enough just to blow those tiny tiny little specks around they're like dust they're very very light so that gives us a, a pretty little center wasn't exactly what I was going for but that's okay I, I think I've made it work uh, and we'll see what happens see how they look tomorrow when they're dry and uh, I'll paint the edges with silver but they certainly do sparkle don't they <laughs> get that one on the left there on the bottom all right Thanks for being patient with me, my little experiments, and I'll see you in the morning for the demolding and the painting of the edges. Hey guys, I'm back. It's the next day. Hi. <laughs> right, let's have a look at these little babies. Get them out. Hopefully they'll pop out nice and easily from my mold that I made. Just loosen it around a little bit there we go look at that easy peasy lemon squeezy right let's put you on auto focus no, it doesn't want to focus all right let's have a little look I was on the wrong setting on my camera. <laughs> I just had to change it. Oh, the trials of videoing. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I do it to myself. Right, here we go. So you can see that the overall sort of a color has got a bit of a silver sheen to it. And look at that in the middle. That's that aluminum or aluminum that we just kind of melted on top. So I've got some pretty striations um not wonderful like the color contrast isn't really there if if you're after is more of a subdued one shaded coaster then this is yours i guess let's have a look at the back oh that's quite pretty oh that is quite pretty i'm just having a look at it on the the real side rather than through the screen i actually do like that maybe I prefer it more although you can't really see the you can see a little bit of silver a little bit I actually can't quite like that why couldn't that be on the top now see if I'd put my silver in earlier <laughs> it would have sunk to the bottom and I would have seen it and then I'd be happy oh my gosh there's just no pleasing me is there all right let's have a look at the next one trying to be a bit quicker let's loosen this all the way around there we go oops get that got a slight little little lip that it's catching just because I didn't fill them all the way to the top so it's like a little bit rough there because I haven't filled it all the way to the top but that's okay um, very light sanding with an emery board like you know a nail file is all you need just to smooth those off it's not like it's a huge lip see there look at those rock edges aren't they pretty all 
All right, let's have a look at the back of this one as well. Oh, I think I do like this side better, you guys, now that I've seen the other this one as well. I do. Um, I may even give this side a, a little flood coat and put some more silver on, just because I do like it. <laughs> All right. I just like the shading better of it, I think. Let go, let go. There's that one as well. So nice striations, but they're not they're not like circular. Probably because I was picking at it and moving things, so it's a bit sort of off centre. But I do like that side. pretty effects you get hey all right next I'll just loosen all of these while I'm around here Oops, I'm sticking a bit I'm sticking a bit it's hard to actually I take my glove off I can't get it with my glove on it's just these little areas where um I'll come back to that one where uh, the um, resin has caught because I haven't domed it. Let me get this one out as well. There we go. This one's got a prettier pattern on the front. It's more sort of symmetrical. You can see the little tiny, tiny little air bubbles. I think that have been caught underneath on the bottom. Not sure how you get rid of those. I wonder if this one's got it too. Uh, there's a few there. I mean, you can't feel them. It feels nice and smooth, but if you look really carefully, you can see little tiny dots where the air bubbles have been trapped. So look at those. Oh, I like these ones. Really pretty. I mean, some of them I do like. That one's more symmetrical again, but some of them aren't. Really pretty. But the back is, it's very symmetrical on all of them. So, um, yeah, I may, I may do a little flood coat. This one's, this one's prettier. Look at that. You can actually see the silver through there. That one's really pretty, really shiny. All right, so that's them. Um, I'll get set up for a photo shoot and um, I'll paint the edges and I'll show you the finished product in a minute. Well, a few seconds for you.